bank statement, uh, government document, paycheck, which we already have in the, in the, the statute. Same, the same list we have. Right, right. But there, you, you see the, the statute's been very specific that the addresses have to match as well. Uh, there, there, there still would be a requirement for what is current, I mean, even though it's something that was five years old. But, and, and what current has been interpreted by uh, the court to be a year. The address on the utility bill would have to be the same as the address on the voting list for the non-photo ID. Because they'd have to have two. They'd have to have two. They'd have to have two. But the name, the, the name is. The name would have to match. Talk about the one to a study about oh, the backup. Excuse me. One more thing. Plus, the signature would have to match too. <coughs> okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. One to a study about backup paper ballots. Can you talk about that a little bit? And also, what that means in regards to have we solved all the controversy with the voting machines at this point? Uh, no. One one of the reasons for the backup paper ballots is a simple physical reason that sometimes sometimes there can be a power outage. Uh, it, with the electronic machines, and, and the batteries are constructed to go for a certain period of time. But I think if there were a power outage that lasted all day, uh, I'm not certain in reality these batteries would last all day. And if, if the last thing anyone wants to do is turn a voter away because you don't know if they'll come back. And if they don't come back, they've been disenfranchised. The other thing is that uh, sometimes the machines break down. And then you have uh, fewer machines available. And it does take a, it takes a certain period of time to vote, no matter what, because on those machines they're constructed that you go from screen to screen to screen. Some of the earlier versions, pre-Hava of the electronic machines, would have the entire ballot uh, laid out with flashing lights uh, to indicate where you had not voted. So it was like you were looking at a giant ballot, and then it was easier to, to pick and choose, and you perhaps could vote a little faster and decide not to vote on certain races if you didn't want to. So it's, it's really a question that's more of logistics uh, than anything else. And there are some people who, a lot of people feel very comfortable with the touchscreen machines, but then some people don't. And so we, just like in a classroom, there are lots of ways for people to learn and express themselves. We were trying to provide uh, the optimum to the voters, but more than that, a safeguard so that no one would be turned away. So with the backup paper ballots, uh, what we came up with, um, using our best judgment with the experienced election administrators here in our office, 10% for the presidential primary and 25% for the general. But we would actually like to include election officials in this process and see if there's a formula that we can develop uh, that uh, where we've got some agreement on, uh, number one, when they would be used and uh, what types of elections and to what extent. Um, for instance, we're not looking to use backup paper ballots for this primary election because, for instance, we know there, there, there's not a primary in every precinct of the state. And so even in a county where there would be some primary elections, it's not likely that there's a primary election in every part of the county. So some of the extra machines that aren't in use could serve to be brought in to back up uh, in case of a machine failure. Whereas if, if you're in an, an election where every precinct is in use, the backup paper ballots give us that safety net. Uh, what we have done uh, historically with this has been to uh, compensate the boards of elections for their printing costs. It's it's not a high cost item, but uh, understanding that it wasn't built into their budgets and we were asking them to do that for the first time, we did reimburse them for those costs. When you said earlier that you want to have separate voting, in, if someone goes to the wrong precinct, that they could still vote and the things that would still be in that precinct would count. What kind of technology does that take, and do all the counties have that to be able to do Two that? Two eyeballs, basically. No, so you have someone going through them manually. You, that's that's <laughs> what. We, the thing is, is that if a person was not in the correct precinct, first of all, we'd be encouraging them to go to the correct precinct, no matter what. Uh, but second of all, if you know some people won't go, and some people insist that they're this is where I'm supposed to be. And then the poll workers, rather than to argue with them and turn them away, just give them a provisional ballot. Um, and, and who knows, on election day, if you have high volume, you're not really sure who's right in this situation. And you're dealing with the potential of 8 million people plus. So what would happen is that when the provisional ballot is, first of all, when the provisional ballots are actually processed, uh, the boards would, would check to see if the person is, in fact, registered to vote. If they are, but they ended up in the wrong precinct, 
uh, then what they would be able to do is they, they know what the ballot in that precinct would look like. They have a sample of every ballot for every precinct, including rotation. And then they would they would simply be able to match up the two ballots. There's probably an electronic way to do it, uh, but a provisional ballot is always a paper ballot in Ohio. So it would still be provisional. So we're only talking about provisional. Because once a regular ballot, once a person votes that ballot, uh, it loses any connection with the identity of that person, and it becomes uh, completely anonymous. And that's so that that that's why the great care is taken on whether a person is entitled to vote a regular ballot. And the provisional allows us to go back and correct mistakes if mistakes occur. Okay. Thank you. 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 Th